It's a new year and that means it's time for a new step on the boat build, which looks and feels exactly like all of the other steps I've done in the boat build. Progress is slow, but it's happening. Last time I finished cutting out all the bulkheads that will go side to side. Now it's time to change directions, literally, and build the framing that will run front to back throughout the entire hull of the tiny house boat. This marks the first time I'll start actually assembling this giant pile of parts I've cut out, the second project I'm attempting to use epoxy for, and fingers crossed, zero catastrophes. Oh no! I lost my tripod. I can't find my tripod. This happens every time I organize. Found it. Okay, last time I finished cutting out the bulkheads. So now I have all the bulkheads which will go like this to form the length of the boat. Now what I need to work on next is the side pieces that run perpendicular to the bulkheads. I did get quite a bit of work done on these yesterday, kind of cutting out pieces and prepping. I was feeling extra intimidated about this yesterday. Now that I've gotten some of it done, I don't remember what was so intimidating about it. I feel like that's often the case. The hardest step in most projects is just getting started. Sometimes when getting started is feeling extra hard. I have to eliminate some element to make it a little bit less overwhelming. And often that is filming. So I didn't bother with the camera yesterday and I came in here and I got a lot of cuts done, which I think should set me up pretty well for what I'm doing today and for the next couple days maybe. Let me show you what's going on here. So this right here is the basic shape I'm trying to make today. And it's made out of seven different pieces of plywood and then also has framing here, which I'm gonna make out of these cedar two by twos. And all I got done yesterday was cutting out the seven pieces of plywood for one of the sides. And where I stopped yesterday was, this part is not gonna be a sharp edge like this, it's gonna curve up in the front. So I, I was working on laying out the cuts that I need to make, but I need a bigger square and a bendy thing. Apparently that's called a batten. Now I'm ready. Hit the ground running today, get this done. Am I over explaining this? It is with great regret that I announce that this video marks the return of voiceover Emma. There's truly nothing I hate more than hearing myself do a voiceover, and I have to believe that the reason that the videos I made during my original voiceover era did as well as they did was because they sent my viewers into such an overwhelming full body cringe that they were physically unable to click away. But for the sake of giving my tiny little brain a break and taking real time narration off the table when what I really should be focusing on is building a freaking boat, sacrifices had to be made. What I've done is every five inches from the front of the boat to where the curve ends, I've marked a spot at a different distance down from the top. And now what I need to do is drive a nail into every one of these spots that I've marked, curve the bendy thing around it, and then I'll have my line that I need to cut, I think. which I don't know why it would be hard, but I attempted something similar to this when I was trying to cut plywood to fit the curve of the bus roof, and it went terribly. <laughs> this has been the real beauty of having somebody else tell me what to do on this project so far. Things work so much better when somebody else designed them than when I try to design them, <laughs> crazy enough. Ignoring that this doesn't quite fit on the table, I now have the entire length of the side of the boat cut out in the plywood. Next thing I need to do is cut up these two by twos into the right sizes. And then after that's done, once this all starts to actually come together, the two by twos are the same size as the notches that I cut into all the bulkheads, so they should just sort of, ah! sort of fit together. <laughs> This is very difficult to do with one hand, but you see what I mean, hopefully. I think I'm gonna start with this back section since it doesn't have any curves and is less intimidating. And then once I have that done, I'll just work my way forward. Okay. I cannot emphasize enough what a dream it is to have actual plans for this houseboat build. 
With the bus, this task would have required countless sleepless nights fixating on trying to visualize what pieces I would need and how they would fit together to create the end result I was looking for, followed by a shopping trip where I'd come to the realization that the material I decided on exists in 16 slightly different versions. I'd pick one at random, get to work, spend three days staring into the abyss whenever I ran into an issue, and just eventually end up with some wonky angles made of the wrong material. With the plans, I just grab a piece of previously purchased material from the provided shopping list, check the number on the plans, double check my measurement four or seven times, cut and move right along to the next step. The lack of plans was really not something I anticipated being a huge part of the challenge when I started building the bus, but looking back now, I think that easily might have been 50% of the overall struggle. Honestly, between having plans and this nice workshop, I think I'm gonna really start to like building. Back end is done other than the long pieces that go all the way up to the front. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the front really quickly. the whole entire actual length of the boat right here. Before I trim the last few pieces, I, I'm going to just actually start screwing the whole thing together temporarily. I'll have to take it apart and redo it because when I'm actually doing it for real, it'll all be stuck together with epoxy, but I just wanna make sure everything actually fits perfectly before I start that mess. To love each other like in place, everything fits. This is the first time I'm getting any sort of a feel for the actual dimensions. This is the actual length that the whole boat is gonna be, which means that from here to here, that's the entire, that's the entire living space. <laughs> a little bit smaller than the bus. All right, so all I have to do now is label this, take it completely apart, make a duplicate of every single piece so that I can make a mirror image of this and then put the whole thing back together with epoxy twice. Easy peasy, right? I'm gonna at least get to work on the duplicating part and I guess see how much I get done before next time. It's epoxy day, just trying to talk a big game because we all know my track record with epoxy. The first time I tried my hand at epoxy was around the same time of year last year and I decided to stick to that pattern because epoxy likes to be at 77 degrees and I don't like to do things in a way that makes any sense, so dead of winter it is. It's definitely not 77 degrees in here. I'm just hoping it's somewhat close to 55. Back then, the sub-freezing temperatures didn't get me, but my refusal to follow directions did, and I ended up with an improperly mixed epoxy that left me with a permanently sticky mess of a countertop that had to be completely torn up and redone. I am using a different epoxy this time. This one needs to be mixed in a two to one ratio and comes with these handy pumps that measure for you. The smell is bringing up memories. In theory, you're supposed to be able to just add the same number of pumps from each bottle and come out with the correct mixture. In reality, even though I've been storing these inside of my warm house, the pump on the bigger bottle was extremely hard to press. I needed to use both hands and or my body weight to get it all the way down and the bottle kept collapsing in on itself in the process. Set a timer for three minutes. I wasn't trying to repeat my previous mistakes. I like to f 
things up in new ways as much as possible. So I set a timer and stirred for every last second, scraping the bottom and sides as I went to make sure nothing was left unmixed. Then I added some wood flour to thicken it up. I'm not sure exactly why, I'm just following orders here, but apparently this makes it stronger. And I'm guessing maybe if I'd added a little more, it would have made it less messy to work with in this specific scenario. But I was feeling pressed for time. And I also didn't want to get my plans all messy, trying to turn to the page with the pictures of how it's supposed to look. So I decided to err on the side of runny. I ended up with a sort of sparkly goo that actually looked exactly like the stuff that oozes out of a freshly made cinnamon roll. And also, come to think of it, was exactly as sticky and messy as that stuff too. I started buttering the edges of the plywood where my joints would go, trying to keep the goo where it belonged and failing miserably. Whenever I've tried my hand at epoxy or really anything that's messy and has kind of a strict working time, but especially epoxy, I get a little panicky in my hurry and start to forget incredibly basic things. I took that to a new level even for me right here when I started to screw in the first piece of framing without putting any epoxy on it first. Like, let me just forget to do the only thing I'm doing right now, I guess. I don't know, it's fine. I realized as soon as I finished the first piece and quickly corrected my mistake. The screws I'm putting in here are temporary. These are just random drywall screws and I'm going all the way through both layers and screwing into the plywood of my workbench just to hold everything firmly in place while the epoxy cures. Once that's done, the screws will come out and it'll hopefully all hold together as one big piece. Here's where you see me make my second rookie mistake. Rule number one that I learned the first time I was doing epoxy, never scrape out your container because that's where any unmixed bits are likely to be lingering and if they're not mixed, they won't cure. But again, I was a little panicky. I ran out of mixed epoxy halfway through buttering one piece of framing and I was nervous about how long it was going to take me to mix another batch. So I was trying to stretch what I had. I realized a couple minutes later what I'd done, but at that point there was nothing I could do other than hope this epoxy would be a little bit more forgiving. But after that first batch, the next few rounds of mixing went a lot more smoothly and I finished the side off pretty quickly. Oh no! No! It is looking like an absolute mess, but it's done. Now comes the worst part of waiting to see if it cures or if I have messed something up. It's supposed to take five hours at 77 degrees. It's about 60 degrees in here, so I'm just gonna let it sit all day. I was gonna try to get both of these done today, but I think that's not wise to try to do that now. I don't know, no obvious catastrophes, but there wasn't the first time I did epoxy either. I think I just have to wait and see if I mess anything up badly enough on measuring or stirring that it that it's gonna not cure properly. In the meantime, I need to go get some more diesel so my heater doesn't quit and figure out how to clean some of this up if it's possible. Wish me luck. I hope this is successful. The next morning, I rolled out of bed and went straight out to the garage to find out my fate. <gasps> yes! This stuff is rock hard. I think it worked. Yes! I'm pretty sick right now. This video that I haven't even finished filming yet needs to be published in 
48 hours. And so much freaking baloney has happened this morning. I was planning to already have my second round of epoxy done right now. And because of said baloney, I haven't even started yet. And I gotta say, it kind of feels like the universe is working against me getting this done today. But I'm gonna focus on the positives. Like the epoxy that I did yesterday set up properly. That's a huge win. Baloney that happened this morning has been resolved. My diesel heater did not lose power in the middle of the night last night and melt itself, which for some reason I was pretty worried that that was gonna happen. And I've got some water boiling for some tea. So I'm gonna have my tea and then I'm gonna get focused and get this done today. I am admitting defeat. I'm gonna let the universe win this one today. <laughs> I'm just running into more baloney. Baloney of my own making this time. <sighs> Basically what's happening is that I forgot there were still a couple of pieces that I need to cut out before I put the second half together and it's just taking me so long. Right now it's Wednesday afternoon, starting to get a little bit dusky and I still have, even if everything went perfectly from here and out, probably an hour before I even get ready to start doing the epoxy and then I would have to do all the epoxy and then it would get dark and cold and honestly the most pressing part about this whole thing right now is that like I said it is Wednesday afternoon and this video has to go up on Friday so I just need to start editing <laughs> so we can chalk this one up to my poor planning I guess regardless of me stopping short of my goal I'm still pretty excited about what I've got done here up until this point in the the build all I've been doing is cutting out a pile of parts and watching it get bigger and bigger and never actually building anything or putting anything together and starting to assemble them is nerve-wracking but also kind of a relief in the sense that I I can see a tiny bit of progress right now it is January 3rd it's a brand new year and maybe I'm crazy for thinking this but it's also the year that I hope to get this boat on the water 2024 I want to see this boat finished and floating on a lake fingers crossed that is not going to happen if I continue to work at the pace that I've been going. But now that the holidays are behind me and I have, I have no plans to be traveling for the first time since I moved here, I'm setting a new resolve. I'm gonna pick up the pace. I'm also gonna start being more strategic about what I film and when I just put my head down and work because as much as it seems like filming shouldn't be that much work and actually isn't that much work, it makes things take a lot longer. I cannot get even a fraction of the building done on days when I have the camera rolling as I can otherwise and there are still a few more pieces really similar to what i've been doing that i need to cut out and get ready but i'm going to just put my nose down and get that done so that hopefully the next time you guys see me i will actually be assembling the whole please wish me all of the luck and the hard-headedness and the determination whatever else it's going to take for me to accomplish that so that in a couple weeks maybe we can all finally start to see this little tiny floating home start to take shape yeah <laughs>